hello guys in this video i will show you how to create a poster like this in photoshop let's jump right in let's create a new document select a4 and click create quickly i set up my guideline now select the rectangle tool and let's create a rectangle shape like this you can hold the space bar to move the shape around now the property panel will automatically open for you. If you don't find yours, you can find it within the Windows tab. So make sure properties is checked. Now let's set the corner radius to around 200. Now select the rectangle layer, press Ctrl or Command G to make a copy. Double click on the second copy thumbnail and set its color to red. Click OK. Now bring back the property panel and make sure to unlink these corner radius. This will help you to set a different values for each of the corner radius. So as we can see, we have these corner radii to be zero. Now make sure to select this particular shape or layer and press Ctrl Command T. Hold Shift and click and drag this point to the right like this. Hide the property panel and now let's change the color of the first rectangle shape by setting a white color for the rectangle shape. This color blends with the background so we need to change the background. So let's go to adjustment solid color and choose a different color for the background so that we don't have the background to blend with the rectangle shape. The color from here was OK to differentiate the background from the white rectangle shape. It's now time to bring in our subject. And in the previous video, I showed you how you can import or bring in your subject. So you can click on the label at the top right corner of your screen to watch this particular video. Click and drag your subject into your workspace. Make sure your subject layer is above all the layers. Fast forward, I resize and reposition the subject. So please make sure to do so quickly and let's continue from here. We need to make our subject pop. Make sure the subject layer is active or selected. Go to filter and choose camera raw filter. Expand the basic and follow these settings. Also, expand detail and follow these settings. Click OK when you are satisfied with the result. And now our subject looks quite good. It's now time to work on our typography. And with this, we need to bring in our grid guidelines to help us align the text perfectly. I normally use grid lines in order to make my text aligned properly and make my work look a little more professional. Whilst creating the guidelines, let me also adjust things a little bit to create room for other elements. Now select the rectangle tool and let's create a shape like this. Now from the property panel, make sure the corner radius is linked together. Enter 30 for the corner radius. Click the fill color to choose a color. You can also double click on the shape layer thumbnail and then with the help of an eyedropper to sample a color from here. We don't want a much dark color but a dark gray kind of color. Let's resize the shape. Now select the type tool. Click in here to bring in your text and set the font size to 18. Click on this left align icon. So for the font color, let's choose white since it's going to be on a dark gray color. Let's choose semi bold for the font weight and write in our text. Double click on the text thumbnail to highlight all the text. Now within the font size, this looks too big. So let's choose somewhere around 11. 
So 11 is okay. Now let's position our text. With the help of the move to click and drag it to the right a little bit. We want to create a shape at the left side of the text. So select the ellipse tool. Hold down shift and draw a small circle like this. From the fill color within the property panel, click and choose red as the color of the shape. With the help of the move tool, click and drag it to this area and make sure it's in line with the text. Now select the type tool and click this area to add a text. Now we need to change the color of the text from white to black or dark gray since we are writing on a white color. With the font width, let's set it to extra bold. Set the font size to around 30. Note that the main heading needs to appear larger and bolder as compared to other text so far as the principle of hierarchy is concerned. Open the character panel and let's open the spacing a little bit. In this case, let's set it to minus 25. Now let's begin to write our text. With the type tool selected, highlight all the text and go back to the character panel. Click and drag this area to the left a little bit to reduce the font interval. Choose the type tool or press T on your keyboard. Use the type tool to draw a rectangular shape like this. This will automatically fill in the text for you. Now let's set the font weight to regular and font size to around 14. Go back to the character panel and do some little adjustment with the text. Now it's time to resize the text or reduce the length of the text. To do that, place your cursor here, make sure the type tool is still active and please don't resize with transformation. Make sure the type tool is still active and use it to resize the text. So let's hide the character panel. We don't need it for now. So right now we need a space for a logo and I'm going to use the ellipse tool to create a simple logo from scratch. So hold shift and draw a circle like this. Choose red for the shape color Press Ctrl Command J to duplicate the shape. Make a copy of the first two shapes. Select all the element shape layers and press Ctrl Command T to transform. Scale it down and use the left arrow key to position it to the left. So quickly select the type tool and let's write our text. We've gone through this process before, so I will speed this part for the sake of this video. Alright, we will place our social media handles here. Once again, I will use the ellipse shape to create the social media icons. But for you, you have to use the actual social media icons in your poster. By so doing, I also speed this part. Congratulations for doing such an amazing work. It's now time for us to position the social media icons. Make sure to select all the layers and use the arrow key to move them up. It's left with some few touches. Press Ctrl or Command H to hide the guideline. The background looks too plain, so we need to add in some patterns to make it attractive. So click and drag to bring in your pattern. Resize and position your pattern. Make sure your pattern layer is above the background solid color fill layer. Play around with the blend mode till you are satisfied with whichever that you want. For me, I'm going for soft light. Now reduce the opacity to around 20%. Now this looks good but left with one final thing. Now select the subject and go to filter, camera raw filter. We need to increase the sharpness of our subject. So let's increase it. And when you are satisfied, click OK. Now let's zoom in to check if it's OK.
And so guys, that's it. If you find this tutorial useful, please don't forget to hit the like button. And also let me know your view in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.